This is the Electric Fields Homework Question 37. You are asked to define, first of all, the electric potential at a point in an electric field. Notice there are three marks allocated to your answer. So the first one is for making the point that it is defined as work done per unit charge. Secondly, to refer to a positive test charge. And the third mark for stating that is, this is the work done when moving the charge from infinity to that point. Now, the direction of this movement is important in this definition and to help you appreciate why this is the correct direction I've added this diagram so this would not be needed for your answer it's just to make sense of it now. So if we imagine a positive charge and we consider the potential at different positions around that charge, I've drawn you some equipotential lines here then you should know that potential is defined to be zero at infinity. Now, if you consider your positive test charge and think of work being done, moving that charge from infinity to the point, then you would be moving in the direction of this arrow here. Now, consider a positive test charge if you were moving towards a central positive charge, it would be being repelled and you would have to do work against that force of repulsion. So as you do work, you would expect the potential to increase. So look at the example numbers I've given you and you should see that they are becoming increasingly positive as you get closer and closer to the central charge. So this is matching the wording in the definition that I've given here. If instead of a positive charge you were considering a central negative charge, then the values for potential would be negative, um, and, but you would still be considering the motion of a positive test charge. So imagine using moving a positive test charge towards a negative central charge and you'd have an attractive force. So it would make sense that that is negative work. The positive test charge would in effect be falling towards the negative central charge and its potential would be decreasing from zero down to increasingly negative values. Next, you're shown part of a region around a small positive charge. That is the charge plus Q shown on the left-hand side of the diagram here. You are told that the electric potential at L due to this charge is equal to 3 volts. You are then asked to calculate the magnitude of the charge Q and to express your answer to an appropriate number of significant figures. So just using the standard equation for potential in a radial field, we have that the potential is Q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught r. Rearranging for Q gives us this, and then it's just a matter of substitution. So here we have the permittivity taken from the data sheet and we have got the distance um, from Q to L here and finally we have the value for the potential. Now you need an appropriate number of significant figures in your answer. Looking at these two terms you see that they are to two significant figures so that is what I have taken in my final answer. You don't consider the 4 or the pi. The pi will automatically come to more significant figures and the 4 you can consider to be exact. 
Moving on, you're asked to show that the electric potential at N due to the same charge is 1 volt. So just glancing back at the diagram, we know the potential here um, at L and we'd like to know the potential here at N. Notice the distance from Q to N is three times the distance from Q to L. You could uh, use the same equation for potential here in a radial field. Take the value of Q, substitute that in and your new value of R. But it's um, a more direct route con to consider just that the potential is inversely proportional to the distance R. So that means since the distance from the charge to N is three times the previous distance, then the potential will be three times smaller, leading us to our answer of one volt. Next, you're asked to show that the electric field strength at point M, which is midway between L and N, is 2.5 volts Per meter. So a quick glance at the diagram looking at point M shows that it is a distance of 0 0.6 meters from Q. So then using the equation for electric field strength in a radial field we can substitute in the value for Q that we previously calculated the 4 pi epsilon naught and that distance that I have just shown you in the diagram. And this leads us to the correct answer. Next you are told that R and S are two charged parallel plates. So we have a different scenario here and those parallel plates are 0 0.6 metres apart. So here you see that distance marked in the diagram. The potentials are given as plus 3 volts and plus 1 volt. Uh, you're asked to sketch the electric field between R and S showing its direction. So one of the key points is that this is a uniform field, so the field lines should be equally spaced throughout the field. And secondly, the direction should be from the more positive towards the less positive plate. Next, you're told that point T is midway between those plates. So here we have point T in the middle. Um, and you're asked to calculate the electric field strength at T. Now, in fact, the exact position of T is not really relevant here because this is a uniform field and the equation for electric field strength between parallel plates is just the potential difference divided by the separation of the plates. Now, since one plate was at 3 volts and the other at 1 volts, that gives a difference of 2 volts, which we divide by 0.6, to give the answer of 3.3 volts per meter. Finally, you are told that um, parts B3 and C2 both involve the electric field strength at a point midway between potentials of 1 and 3 volts. However, you're asked to explain why the magnitudes of these two electric field strengths that you have uh, already calculated are in fact different. This is quite a simple point. Um, the original field that you studied was a radial field um, and so th um, that would behave differently to the second one which was a uniform field between parallel plates. So it's really just appreciating that there are two different equations and you select the appropriate one to the appropriate context.
So in a radial field, field lines uh, become increasingly far apart, radially out from the central charge, whereas between parallel plates we have uniform uh, field lines uh, with equal uniform separations.